You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to slice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and we're going to be talking about Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was an interesting artist. I first became familiar with her work when I was a teenager after watching a biopic in an art house theater. She's become an icon of not only art history, but also pop culture. When a person becomes an icon in the popular imagination, it can become a challenge to tell the woman from the myth. If I were to summarize Frida Kahlo in one sentence, I would say she was a feminist surrealist painter best known for her unflinching self-portraits. Of course, while I feel like that summary is accurate in many ways, it's also not the whole story. She was not formally a part of the Surrealist movement, and while she was bold in depicting herself with that prominent unibrow and other things that may be sort of questionable in terms of like the idealized feminine aesthetic, she did also sort of feel self-conscious about her appearance in some ways. She was known to wear big skirts and peasant attire in part because she was trying to connect to the Mexican culture and sort of show her pride in her heritage, but also the big skirts were covering up a small leg that she later had to have amputated. She talked about how she would wear things that would hide the braces and other things that she needed that were a part of the medical challenges and the difficulties that she had throughout her life. In some ways, she owned it, but she definitely wanted to be in control of what people saw and didn't see of her struggles. She was interested in symbolism, and her work has a dreamlike, metaphorical nature, similar to surrealism, so I tend to put her in that category as I analyze it. Also, while Frida did not identify as a surrealist artist, she simply said she was painting her reality. She did exhibit two paintings, including today's subject, The Two Fridas, in the International Exhibition of Surrealism in 1940. And André Breton, the founder of the Surrealist movement, talked about how he considered her to be a Surrealist. When we look at the painting, The Two Fridas, we see magical realism and symbols representing her struggle with dual identities— She was proud of her cultural heritage and is often associated with indigenous Mexican culture, but she was actually biracial. Her father came from Germany while her mother was native to Mexico. Frida did not consider herself to be particularly religious, but her mother was a devout Catholic, and a lot of Catholic iconography pops up throughout her body of work. In the case of the two Fridas, I see the exposed heart as reminiscent of the sacred heart imagery in Catholic and other Christian images, while simultaneously the heart can be seen as a reference to Aztec ritual sacrifices. She's constructing her work using symbols that pull at the different threads that make up her multifaceted cultural identities. She painted this self-portrait after her divorce from Diego Rivera in 1939. It seems totally natural for major life changes like that to prompt some introspection and reflection as a part of the healing. In this work, we see twin images of Frida in different outfits. In one image, she's wearing clothing, sort of European, traditional-style wedding dress, similar to what she was wearing before she married Diego Rivera. In the time before her her marriage to Diego, she was known to wear sort of more European-styling clothing, sometimes even wearing a suit. But after she married Diego, she adopted more traditionally Mexican styling. When Frida talked about this painting, she referred to the two Fridas as the one that Diego loved and the one that he rejected. 
both Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo said that they were the love of each other's lives, but they also had a really difficult relationship. They were both notoriously unfaithful to each other, and they both caused each other a lot of pain. Frida was known to have said that there were two major accidents in her life, the bus and Diego, and she wasn't sure which one was worse. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Frida wrote about this piece in her diary. Her first explanation was that it was inspired by memories of an imaginary friend from her childhood. Later, she would say it was based on her feelings of loneliness and separation from Diego. The two of them were divorced at the time she painted this, although she did remarry him a year later. Both Fridas have their hearts exposed. The one in more European attire, the heart is even more exposed. It seems to be bleeding out, and there are surgical pinchers trying to stem the bleeding, but it's getting through. The dress is stained. The other one, in more traditional Mexican attire, has a little picture of a young Diego Rivera in it, sitting in her lap. A vein is going from the heart of one Frida to another, and we see it continues on into the, the image of the little Diego Rivera. They are literally connected. I think one of the most poignant symbols in here, though, is that the two Fridas are holding hands. One's first thought might be that this is all just sort of an obvious metaphor for her broken heart and the efforts to heal after the failed marriage. There is, of course, always more to symbols, and a good artist crafts an image with multiple layers. The breakup was not the only trauma in Kahlo's life. As a child, she suffered polio. She had a bad leg, which, as I said before, she sometimes covered with those long dresses. More significantly, when she was a teenager, she was impaled during a horrific bus accident. The accident altered the course of her life as it left her in physical pain, unable to have children, but it also caused her to abandon her previous ambition to study medicine as she picked up art during her recovery. The heart is not a cartoonish heart. It's a more scientific rendering, perhaps owed to her interest in anatomy and physiology. The structure of the body, physical pain from illness, injury, and medical treatment were ongoing issues in Frida's life and recurring motifs in her work. Of course, to psychoanalyze the piece just a bit more for good measure, we see storm clouds looming in the background, which could symbolize her inner turmoil. The two Fridas are dressed differently, but physically connected, holding hands, and a vein branches out from one heart to the other. What I find most interesting is looking at this work in the body of work, in comparison to some others that she painted. At the start of her relationship with Diego Rivera, she painted a portrait of Diego and Frida. In there, she was a younger artist, and he was much more prominent in his career. He was bigger, older, more imposing, a figure both physically and metaphorically. He was looming large in the art scene. In this picture, however, we see the two Fridas. We see Frida sort of supporting herself. They're holding hands. We see her sort of reaching out to herself becoming more independent. We see her two identities being stitched together. I think that's why she has become such the great feminist icon. She went through a lot, but she was stronger for it. And through all of that pain and all of that adversity, she learned to lean on herself. Of course, that's the message that I see in it. Largely because that's the message I think I like to see in it. Surrealist artworks are kind of like a Rorschach test, those ink blot tests where you can see whatever connections you are so inclined to. It's like looking at clouds. You use your imagination to connect the dots in the way that you want to. 
others might see something totally different. And that's okay. I think what's great about this work is there's a lot that feels clear and concrete that we can look at to support our argument in favor of our interpretation. And simultaneously, it's open to different interpretations, much like Frida and her own legacy. She was proud of her heritage, simultaneously strong and assertive as a feminist. She was traditional in some ways and modern. She sometimes portrayed herself in men's attire. She not only included her quote-unquote flaws, she highlighted them, making a signature element of her work. She laid it all out there in a way that can sometimes feel uncomfortable for the viewer, but even about 80 years later, her work resonates with a wide audience as she touches on themes of struggling to reconcile different aspects of her identity, pain, recovery, and self-acceptance. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.